Yes, welcome back to the final part of the show. Now, since the weather doesn't actually know that it's summer, mm. Ashling Larkin is serving up a between season supper. Make up your mind, weather. Ashling, remind us what you're making, my friend. I know, lads. I planned the salad, I planned the outfit, and then we had like six hailstone storms today. I'm like, seriously, it's meant to be summer. We're in May now. This is not coordinating with my plan at all. So I'm taking it to a beautiful Greek island tonight. Santorini, Eos, wherever you want to go. Let's go and dream and escape for a little bit. And I'm doing a gorgeous Greek meatball salad. So it's really, really nourishing and filling. Um, but kind of light and summery at the same time. So actually, I'm just going to start really quickly with the tomatoes. So I've chopped up some little cherry tomatoes here. And they're kind of, they're coming into season at the moment and they're lovely and they're sweet. And I have yellow ones and red ones. I kind of have a little kind of green and red one. And it just, I suppose when we're cooking, we need to always remember that kind of multi-sensory, that it's, we're eating with our eyes. So you want to have lots and lots of colour. And a really good tip when you're serving tomatoes in a salad, bring them to room temperature, never serve them straight out of the fridge and just let them sit just for a couple of minutes in a little bit of sea salt and a little bit of olive oil. It's just, tomatoes are full of umami, so it's going to bring out all that delicious, delicious flavour. So just while we're working on everything else, I'm going to let those sit. And we're going to start with the meatballs. So I'm doing them very traditionally Greek, so I'm going to use lamb mince, okay? Now, you can use a mixture of lamb mince and pork mince, lamb mince and beef mince. You can use turkey mince, okay? So something to be aware of. Lamb mince has about 15% saturated fat in it. Um, whereas you can buy like leaner beef and lean pork mince and it has about 5% fat. So if you were watching the calories or the saturated fat, what you could do is like use half lamb mince and half pork or beef. Or if you don't like lamb, you can use pork or beef or turkey mince and it works really, really well. Um, so just, it's just something to be aware of. It's like, you know me, I'm trying to move us one step closer to healthy all the time. And that's just a great little trick to do that. So in there, I have my lamb mince, I have my garlic. So I've just grated in some garlic. I have a little bit of chopped red onion, okay? And red onion has that lovely sweetness and it adds a little bit of colour. If you have people at home who don't like bits in their meatballs, for instance, um, little people in particular, just leave out the red onion or use a little bit of onion powder instead, okay? So we're going to add in two spices then into this. The first one is cinnamon, quarter of a teaspoon, half a teaspoon. And it's like this secret magic ingredient that makes beef and lamb taste amazing. You don't know it's there, but it lifts the whole flavour and it's gorgeous. Then I'm putting in one of my favorites, cumin is going in. So I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of cumin. And then we want to put in all our herbs, okay? So you've got four herbs, oregano, dill, parsley, and mint, okay? I'm using dried oregano. I am using dried dill and dried parsley because that's what I had. I found beautiful fresh mint in the supermarket. So I'm going to put in fresh mint. But the lovely thing about this is you can mix and match whether they're dried or they're fresh. It actually... For a salad, it would really matter that they were fresh, but for the meatballs, they can be dried or fresh or any combination. But just remember, really good top tip, um, one teaspoon of dried herbs is equal to one tablespoon of fresh herbs. So when you're kind of adding up or scaling down, that's how you remember it, and it's really easy. Next up is a little bit of wholemeal bread that I'm going to soak in milk. Now, this is a little Italian trick, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to bake these meatballs to keep them healthy. And by soaking the bread in a little bit of milk, um, it keeps them kind of really, really soft. And as the fat kind of oozes out as they cook, it absorbs into this, into the, into the, the bread, and it keeps them really, really moist. So we're going to just combine all of those ingredients together, season it up. You could put in a little bit of lemon zest, actually, as well, which would be really, really lovely. I'm not using an egg to bind them. Um, I don't think you need it. You can chill this down in the fridge, make this mixture in the morning, come back at dinner time. You want to roll your lovely meatballs. I have some ready here. Um, and do a double batch. Like if you're going to the bother making them, I would say make a double batch and then put half in the freezer so you have them ready to come out. Okay, pop those there. Another top tip actually is roll them in a little bit of flour before you bake them. So you're kind of replicating, you get that, you know when you fry something, you get that really kind of crispy, crusty bit on the outside for all the lovely flavours. But actually if you roll them in a little bit of flour and then put your olive oil on them and bake them, you still get that lovely kind of caramelisation on the outside where there's loads and loads of flavour from. So I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil over those and they're going to go in the oven for about 20 minutes. So obviously the bigger batch might take about 25 minutes. How do you know when they're cooked? Break one open in the centre. And as long as the juices are running clear and it's not pink, it's fully cooked all the way through, so it's got a brown colour, you know it's cooked. So that's the meatballs, right? They're going in the oven. OK, you got about and two minutes, Ashling. Perfect, yeah. We're going to assemble our gorgeous salad. So we have a lovely plate here, and I'm just going to bring it in. So classic Greek salad. 
we are talking about some lovely baby gem lettuce. So I'm going to layer that on the end. And this is Irish lettuce as well. So it's really, really nice. So you want to build up this salad. And I love to serve a kind of big sharing platters. Classic Greek salad, cucumber. So I've just split them down the middle and I've just taken some of the seeds out because the seeds can be a little bit watery. Then I have gorgeous feta cheese. So the feta cheese is crumbly and it's tangy. It's made from sheep's milk or goat's milk. Um, and it's just really, really typical. And it goes lovely with kind of the, the richness of the meatballs, the tanginess. Then onto that, I have some lovely red onions. So look at all the colors that we're starting to build up. You've got the green, you've got the white, you've got the purple. My Kalamata olives. So these are the black olives. And they come in a little red wine vinegar. So you can actually put a little bit of that red wine vinegar over your salad. And it can kind of act just a really quick dressing with your olive oil. So I've got my olives in there. I've got my cucumber. Then I have my lovely meatballs that have been cooked. So these ones were just out of the oven already. So I'm serving them warm with the salad. Or you can serve them cold. And they're really, really juicy in the center. They're lovely. I'm going to pop those on top. I've got my beautiful tomatoes. So I've got the lovely red that's been marinating. Pop those on. And then we're just going to garnish it with a little bit of fresh mint. And I'm serving it with, normally you'd have tzatziki, um, but I'm just going to do a sour cream and onion dip. And the recipe is up online for that as well. It's just sour cream, onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of dried herbs. And that is it. So it's kind of assembly once you do your prep with your meatballs and the rest is done. And there are so many things that you have just named out there. Make sure you do go to Six Eats to Google all of those things. Ashling will also have them on her Instagram. I'll put them on mine and you can see them on Look YouTube as well. Ashling Larkin, thank you so much. Looks delicious. Amazing. Thank you so, so, Bye, so guys. much, Ashling. Thanks, Oh, my Will. God, the bun made me feel like I was on holidays. Oh, um, now, yeah. it is May the 4th be with you. Paddy in Tipperary said, my eight-year-old daughter, Molly, drew me a picture of Baby Yoda for Star Wars oh. Day. Molly, you cutie. Peter sent in a photo of his Star Wars shrine. Uh, this is our lightsaber that got passed around to every American tourist that never <laughs> thought of bringing one to <laughs> Skellig Michael. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um, Niall has tweeted in a photo of himself and his two lightsabers for the day that's I in. I've shown off, is Niall. he? Uh, Antoinette messaged in a follow of her Yoda slippers and said, the Star Wars movies and characters are timeless and bring a lot of happiness no matter what your age. May the fourth be with you. Thank well, you so and much Martin. and thanks to everyone for sending in all those things. That's all we've got for tonight's show. A huge thank you to all of our guests for joining us and to Ashley Larkin for her summer salad. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow chatting to Celia Holman Lee and of course our money man Connor Pope will be here too. We'll see you for that at six tomorrow evening. Don't be late. Bye. See you later. May the four be with you. Do it. Come on.